sit down here. Mm -hmm. Oh, nest. Nest doors. So yeah, if you're able to... Do you want to my egg? No. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening expenses. <laughs> Let me put this on. What are those doing? Ah, it's good, isn't it? How did it do it's that? Like, it's like you sneezed down yourself. Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> I thought, because uh, cause my kids are going to ask me all these questions about he was, as a taxi driver yeah. in the 60s, yeah. I won't be able to answer any of it because I'll probably have Alzheimer's myself. And, uh, <laughs> but I, um, it's just all this stuff that I didn't know about, uh, you know, what it was like uh, becoming a London taxi driver in the in the sixties. So all I know is that you were you were driving already. Yes. Because you were. Um, are you driving for a film company? Didn't you, the Italian? Oh no! What it was, we drive like a um, eight seat, eight no twelve seater van or box wagon. That you could open, you know, open the sides up, and you could put all the sound gear for whatever, all the camera gear there, and you know, the, these film companies just hire stuff out. I mean, it's pointless them buying a van or something like Italian television coming over here, and uh, they just hire for three or four days. And you, you were a, a unit driver. Yeah, for other film companies yes. as well. And we used to do movie, movie rolly overs or something like that. We used to drive down Dean Street, pick these things up, and deliver them to companies all over London. But some it was ideal because some days you were sort of le had any any work, so you could take your moped and go and see all the points of set rules of London. And that's. As a, that's when you're doing the knowledge. That's doing the knowledge, yes. And it was very, very helpful because you, you're doing, you li doing deliveries all over London that you certainly started to know your way around. You didn't know the names of the roads, but once you're doing the knowledge, you could sort of pick the names up and you could put yourself going along. And it was only 18 months. So when you were... Um so, you, so you're driving already, and then you, um, you got the idea to get a taxi license. Yes, because I was always skinned and never had any money. And um, I think it was before two Christmases. You know, you you just didn't have any money in your pocket. It was a horrible feeling. So you think, well, if I've had a taxi license, at least I could go to work and earn some money. And keep me out in the pub. <laughs> and when, um, can you remember what year this was, roughly? Yes, yeah, so about the 3rd or 4th of January 1967. I uh, went along to the carriage office and signed up. And you get a pep talk and the fellow says 90% of you will fall out of the hit. I think he was right. And you would say, like, so, uh, so you sign up. And then do they, do they give you a book? Yeah, just, a just book? Uh, called a blue book, which is white, and had about 300 different runs that you do, like um, Manor House Station to uh, Th Thornbury, Squ Thornbury Square. And, and you, you just got to... Well, you just do it. It's the easy way of doing it. And and in the book, do they list all of the streets and no. places that you've got to no. look up all of the places of interest, yeah. Yeah. hospitals, police stations, anything that's of interest to London. And um, how long, can you roughly how long they give you to your first, because your, your interviews are called appearances? Or? Yes. Can you remember how long it was to your first appearance? Yeah, in those days, because they were short to drive cab drivers, it was 28 days. Right. 
I think nowadays it's 56 days or even longer than that. And then if you, they didn't really, nobody knew how it worked, but they, they sort of worked out if you did a run, uh, more or less spot on, you got two points. If you um, coughed, hicked and spluttered your way through, you got one point. And I think when you got 18 points or 20 points, they put you down to fortnights. All right, well, uh, 20 points overall or 20 points in one appearance? No, it was more or less, I don't think they would let you do it in um, less than 18 months. Oh, right. So on each appearance, could they ask you anything from the 300? And anything. <laughs> oh, no. and anything. Well, my favourite one was they used to ask you the Institute of Meat to the Institute of Management. And I was just fascinated me this one. It was in Bristol, Institute of Meat was in Bristol House and you used to have to get your bike and look at all the names in there. And the Institute of Management was behind uh, Holborn Police Station. It was just a short run, but I, I, it just fascinated me. The uh, it's fifty years on, you still remember that. Right. That's what that's what I don't get. Whenever you say um, you, because you, you don't talk much about the the famous people you've been in the cab, but mm. whenever you do, so like Abba in the seventies. You remember the run that you yes. did, the fair still right. as well. It's, you know, it's just strange these things stick in your mind. What what were the appearances like? What were they? Terrifying. Yeah? Because yeah. mum said you used to be like really, I couldn't like, drink properly a ill. Oh yeah, I couldn't drink a cup of tea, but if my, if I was out having a cup of tea before I went up there, I used to throw it up. And I found what calmed me down, I would walk from Harmoo Street to the public carriage office up the Angel, and I, that helped. But everybody was all the same. It was all sitting there petrified. I don't know why, it's a form of stage fright, I suppose. Yeah. Because you know, you, you don't know what they're going to ask you. And if you're doing it part time, you need the money, you just want to pass out. Actually, you get up there and sit down, and you just want to say, no, 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 I don't know it, don't know it, and get out. But they were there to test your temperament. You know, one fella, if you went in there, Mr. Finley, and you had to stand there and wait till he told you to sit down. If you sit down, he, he, he wouldn't mark you. You'd go back and come back in a month's time. No, so they could bump you out that quickly. Oh, yeah. But it was all designed to yes. wind you up. Yes. You couldn't call, what's it, the QVM Queen, Victoria Moral outside back on the I mean, his nick nickname was the um, wedding cake. But no way would you allow to, you know, if you ain't round it, call it a wedding cake. <laughs> or the other story was if you get the Tower Bridge and the fellow said, well, keep on. He said, well, the Tower Bridge is, the bridge is up. And of course, that didn't go down very well. <laughs> Did they do it to you? Uh, or you no. just heard about it? Oh, there's this. Uh... <laughs> I was so petrified, I think it was fine to. <laughs> yeah. And when you when you were learning the the knowledge, were you on a, a moped or a bike? Yes, a moped with no crash helmet. Like a Del Boy cheese cutter you had on it, was sort of part of the uniform. And what, like a clipboard yes. on the front? Um, yeah. And would you write the stuff out before you went out, or would you like tear pages out of the book? No, or? no, you just write. Usually, it was four runs. You could stomach that or uh, get it in your head if you went any more than that it was, you know, it was too much and the run was more or less all the roads you went through I mean I, I, I fell a finished knowledge and he gave me all, all the runs so. and then some you could easy top of your head some on you stumbled and, what, and some you you couldn't remember at all. Mine was all over South London, and I know, like three piles. You know, the easy ones, 
not so easy ones and the hard ones and you used to call it over with your girlfriend I used to call it over with Vera yeah my wife so they need so you'd, you'd have them written out yes each road and it'd be like stuff like I don't know um, w- w- is this how they s- you used to say it? is it forward down Agar Grove left into York Way yeah or, and do you like comply roundabout no. no, bare left let you leave by I, th- I think it's as long as you sort of knew, knew which way you were going I think they fell asleep so you started the knowledge and then you, you had some appearances at 28 days yes and then you got the points that you needed to yeah. bring it down to like every 14 days yes and you usually had two appearances of that and what they did once you've passed that they could you your, your wreck but then you do the suburbs afterwards yes Okay. Kind of couple of parents, you know. Um, I can't think of it. I hated it because it was. So like you said in town quite... going to Barnets or something like that. Yeah. And you'd have to know all the street names in. Well, roughly, yeah. There was a lot of big, big names, you know, like Marble Arch to Edgware, you know, you know to Edgware Road and about two other words, and that, that, that was it. You were there. I used to call them rhubarbs. Oh, did that, I imagine that? No, that was Ham, they called Hampstead Garden Suburb. <laughs> Hampstead Garden Suburb, they used to call that rhubarbs. <laughs> so, and then what happened? Was there like was there one appearance where you knew it was the last one? Or yes. did you? Or did they just suddenly turn around and say you've done it? Yes. So you knew there'd be like one more? Uh, you, you, you knew you had done it all. And if you blew that one, you know there'd be another one. You'd come back in a fortnight's time. God, and then what happens? Do they, do they just give you like a piece of paper then, or? Yeah. I think they you've had to pay half a crown for your badge or something. Um, pay for the postage for them to send it to you. That was. <laughs> and and that's when you get the green badge. Yes. Now, but I've lost. I lost two of them. My first one was one two eight five seven. That's the one they gave me. <laughs> you still remember it? No, yeah. well, it's just such an ordeal you can go through. You see, fellas, when you first went up there, you got nice suits on, nice polished shoes. But after eighteen months, your suit was all polished at the elbows. <laughs> you could see your shoes worn down, and the frayed shirt because you got no money. <laughs> so you had to dress up for the appearance oh yeah. Then, yeah yeah you still do oh really yeah yeah if you lost it you had to go to the police station yeah. fill out a form yeah. and then they gave you another sort of told it uh, a form just in case you got stopped by the police yeah and then once you've so once you've got your green badge uh-huh. how how does the taxi work do you, do you back then did you have to buy it or rent it no. or oh, it was called on the flat and you had it for a week I can't remember how it must have been about 13 pounds for the week and you put the, your own diesel in or you could have it on, on what they call on the clock on those meters that you do a percentage you know you you give the owner seventy percent, no sixty percent. You kept forty percent and all your tips, but usually the cab went in on the end of the day or end of the night when you finished. Either you call half on the flat, you could share it with somebody, but it, that more or less everybody went on the uh, on the f- full flat. Why they call it that, I don't know, but you could keep it. Use it as your own for your own use as well, which is quite handy. Yeah. And you, um, where was that? Is it in town somewhere? Yeah, it was off of um, West End Lane. Oh right. The garage there. I mean, it's, yeah. It's two houses now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a luxury block, isn't it? Yeah. But back then, it was uh, mechanical meters. 
Yeah. You know? And when they put fares up, they'd have to. Oh. You'd have to drive in, wouldn't you? They'd have to physically. I'd have a new meter. And you sometimes have to um, wait for the cab to go overhaul because they just couldn't eat alter all these mechanical meters at once. It used to be like a, I remember there used to be like a, a thing in the back that explained the fares, yeah. but there was another thing for when the fares went up that would convert what's on the meter with the new. Oh, we used to call them bingo cards. <laughs> they caused more ructions and everything. People, you know. Because well, you've got to explain that the yeah. fare on the meter isn't... You've got this big place here. <laughs> and the more intelligent the people, the less ones that could work, they ones who couldn't work it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, funny. And, uh, yeah, that was the other thing that, that I remembered. The um, the overhauls, they sounded just as stressful as the, oh, as the yeah. knowledge. Because oh, every year, it's not like an MOT, it's like a proper... They go through everything, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they go to have it steam cleaned first. And then just everything needed doing. Because they could fail you on yeah, um, like silly stuff? Yeah. If, if, if the cigarette thing was full up. <laughs> Another thing I used to get in the... St- the I'm used to have to get the state I used to get in because it meant you know if if your cab had failed it meant another couple of days off of work. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. Yeah. I thought it was a good thing because it's a bit like your body. If something's not slightly right, you let it go. It gets worse and wor- worse. I remember you had the um, the hubcaps. You had a hubcap syndicate. Where you, oh, right. you, you, see, you and three mates each yeah. owned a, hub, a brand new hubcap. Yes. So when one of you went for overhaul, yeah, the, we had as had um, yeah, we put all the new hubcaps on, them, so it looked nice. Uh, one garage end of the street, a taxi fleet, he had bumpers, overhaul bumpers. <laughs> you would take bumpers off the. After taxi and put these new ones on, take it up. When it came back, put the old bumpers back on again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you were on the flat for a bit, so yeah. which is like renting a renting yeah. a taxi. Yeah. And then, at what stage could you buy well, one? Well, it was when I got the money. Uh, mine was about nine months. It, the things they had on the flat in those days were just clapped out. It was horrible to drive, and you know, you take it in the garage and get it back for a service, and it, it, the wheel, the steering wheel used to be greasy. The seats used to be, driver's seat used to be greasy. But with your own one, you know, you take a bit of pride in it. So, that, how did that feel when you got your first cab? Then? Petrified again because you just laid out one thousand two hundred and fifty pound. And you're driving around, and but, um, after a week, it was it was whizzing around like anything. Where do you get them from? That was like one place. Yes, yeah, off of Wandsworth Bridge Road. There's a garage there. It's the only place you could get them. Yeah. But I found I had a manual to start with, and, and it, the gearbox was so. Hard. You needed a, to sort of have a diver's boot on to change gear and get it in gear. Of course, they had the monopoly; they couldn't care less. <laughs> was that uh, was that Lou Fifty Two P? No. Was he had a, 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 it was AGP three four three G. What model was it? Was what were they called? FX Four. An FX Four. Yeah. And and then when you when you passed, how did was how did the the radio circuits work? Because c- could you drive a cab without being on a? Circuit? Oh yeah, when I first started, yeah, that that was you know self self indulgement. You know, if you wanted to be, but I wanted to be on the radio because people, you know, the mini camps were coming in and people wanted to pick you up at your door. They didn't want to stand in the street in the rain and yeah women complaining about their hair and you had um, 
So you had f- what, four radio circuits in London. So there was Lords. No, there was two. Oh, it was there two? To start with, Yeah. when I was there, there were just two people who had a row with each other at one circuit. And uh, one went one way and the other no, went the so other way. So there was just one radio circuit. Yeah, which was started at <laughs> Levy's, you know, with that big garage at the end of York Way. It was started there. Wh- which end of York Way? As you just come in from King, you, you know, Euston Road, on the right, there's a big, big place there. I mean, I used to call it's called Diesel in Up. Every two nights, you know, fill up with diesel. I remember it's like a courtyard. Yeah. So it's now it's all now all shops and coffee shops, shops now. Yeah, yeah. But it used to be like this muse, cobbled yeah. muse, uh, that you go in to get your dove, yeah. your diesel, and you give the fellow who filled it up a couple of bob, and he checked your water and your battery. But they had a radio circuit there, a, you know, radio. Yeah, because he had some premises there where you went downstairs, and I think this fellow Levy who was. He'd been to America and seen it and tried to start it up at there, but then someone else, I can't remember names of the fellas, took it over and moved up Pentonville Road and, and started it there. So then, and was that going before you became a driver? You know, there was already a radio circuit. Yes, yeah. And then, so then, <laughs> so then they split. Yes. B- before your time. Yeah. And one was called Mount View, Mount View yes. and one was called Lords. Yes, that's because of that was the phone number. Right, that's the the name of the exchange yes. in London. Right, so where was Mount View based? Right at the top of Highgate Hill in one of those flats. There. Okay. And um, Lords was in in Pentonville Road. Pentonville Road. Yeah. So when you phone up for a cab, you'd either phone that number or or, the other or your one. number, yeah. Lords. And um, yeah. and then, <laughs> so then, when did you join Lords? Was that uh, soon after you'd passed? Or? No, I gave it, oh, it's 1970, I think. Was it 1970? Oh, I think it was February 1970. Was it easy to join? Uh, yes, in those days. But it was there again, in, it was like the kipper season. Uh, there wasn't much work about This is why a lot, most of the fellas didn't buy their houses because February was absolutely dead. There's hardly any work about. When did they call it the kipper season? Why, why did they call it kipper season? Nobody knows. <laughs> they do not know why. Because you had to eat kippers. Yeah, I think really, that's, yeah, that's, the best, that's all we could afford to put on the table. <laughs> you always, you've always said over the years that um, the first two groups in London that know what the economy's doing are the prostitutes and the taxi drivers. Yeah, and publicans. And publicans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so then you join the radio set. Do they then put a radio in your taxi? Yes. I think you had to pay for the fitting. Uh huh. It was pie, and as you go up um, Highgate Hill, it's near your school, you go underneath the bridge, you see, oh God, oh, oh. or well, if you came along Gordon House Road, turn right, you got the pub there, and uh, uh, underneath, you know, these mu- uh, underneath the bridge, you had muses, yeah. and it, it Pie's place was there. And that's P Y E Pie, like yeah. a radio yeah. outfit. Yeah, and they they just like wire up an antenna and the yeah. put something in your boot. A big we had a big box in your in your boot. Oh, what, like the transmitter. Yes, you had a big mouthpiece there. Oh, that's right. Well, like uh, it's like the McDonald's drive-through. Yeah, microphone. One I used to take you to school. We used to hold on to that, and on these days I just come over cold. Because you just sit there holding this thing. Well, because I sat in the front. There was a, a petition there. No, you sat on the petition and they held this thing. Oh, we could, we couldn't do that these days. I've Mind you, things were a lot slow. The cams were a lot slow. <laughs> yeah. I had such fond memories. So, yeah, back in the seventies, you could 
well, you could go anywhere in a car, you know, so you'd be in the boot, and, but in the taxi, you could sit in the front in the luggage compartment. Yeah. I used to love that. Um, and yeah, like you say, so you'd have like this armrest, yeah. I'd sit on and hold oh, the microphone. Uh, the microphone, yeah. I'd forgotten that. Oh, oh I haven't. <laughs> no, well, I th- when I think about it these days. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. That oh, was fun though, it's living a little, isn't it? Yeah. So you had a, a, a radio fitting. The other thing I remember with the radio was that um, we were two things. There was a, a secret button. So basically it was like yeah. a proper button. Yes. So that if, so you were Apple 3.1. Yes. How did you get that number? No, we just dished out anyone, you know, join the circuit, a number was empty and they gave it to you. Someone might have left the circuit. Right. So you were A31, Apple, oh yes, Apple which is Apple 3.1. Yeah. And then could you hear other... No. Uh, so you couldn't hear other... You could always hear the central control. Yes. But you couldn't hear what the other... Drivers were saying, no. But you'd hear their call signs. So they'd, they'd call out, I don't know, what would, what would it be? That's like Charlie 2 or something. Yes. Mm. Black 6.5 with the pipe. Or something. Black 6.5 with the pipe? Yeah, because he's always smoking a pipe. <laughs> so he was called Black 6.5 with the pipe? Well, this fella was. <laughs> Were there any others? I can't remember any. <laughs> and, and how'd that work? Would you like start the cab up and would you let them know that, you're, that you were there? Yeah. They'd just put out a general call? Call me and they would say, like, hey, you Grove going to King's Cross. And you had a call, open call, first call. If it was so many yards on top of it, then you was a quarter of a mile, then you was half a mile. But you could sort of cheat on it, but God, fellas, they always got caught. They're giving a false position. What would happen? You go for all the complaints thing, and they could have been told off or less off or whatever. Wow, so it's like a manual Uber, isn't it? So, mm. so they put out a call to uh, pick up from Agar Grove, and right. So the open call is just to see who's there. Yeah, yeah I so, can't remember. So you go that. Apple three one. I'm, yeah. I'm in St Paul's Crescent. Yeah, and the nearest driver got the job. But some people don't just come out to the middle. They call like. Hey, I'll go over to King's Cross a short ride. A lot of people didn't want to do it. I just love doing it. The smaller ones. Because there'd, there'd be like a minimum on the clock already. Yeah. Yeah. How did you know what to say? Did they train you? Or was there like a protocol of what you're supposed to say? Yes. Well, you just say Apple 3.1, then the, the dispatcher used to come back to you and say, like, where are you? And you give a position, and then someone else will come in. They give their position, and you couldn't hear what they were saying anyway. No, and he just repeated it what the other fella had said. Did you get to know the dispatchers over time? Not really. Recognise them? Oh, you do, but you never sort of met them. Just plodded along, and they were based in Pentonville Road. The first Pentonville Road, then they moved to Maida Vale. Right. Yeah, because it was um, so. It was, the circuit was called Lords, but the 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 well, not the company, the the organisation was the owner driver drivers, taxi radio O D R T A C owner drivers radio taxi service. A bit of a mouthful. And then that became Dialer Cab. Dialer Cab, that's it. And what did Mount View become? Were they? Did they? Oh, come? they came radio taxis. And then what, Computer Cab came along? That, yeah, because there was so much work, we couldn't cover it. So then a third circuit came up? Yes. Then they couldn't cover it. <laughs> so then a fourth <laughs> one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then none of them. <laughs> now yeah, they're no, starting to fold back down again. Yeah, because <laughs> it's joined up. But it's modern technology. I mean, if we'd all been one circuit, you just couldn't cover, yeah. cover the work. Yeah. It's what it's this technology that's changed the job. Yeah. I mean, th- instead of asking where Apple three one is, they know where it is because of the what they call it GPS. Yeah. 
And then uh, and the other thing with the radio was so you had the, the big button that you'd press. Yes. Um, there was um, there was a secret button, wasn't there? That's like right. an emergency you, you, button. You, you, I think all over, all over the years, uh, I can only re- remember one one incident where one of our cabs, some car wouldn't let him out of a mews, so he pressed the button, then all the other com- cabs go round. Right, so so in, in an emergency, you press this button and yeah. it will cut out all the radios, so you could only hear this one taxi. It's like an all like an yeah. all points emergency. I think no. What what, what the fellow said, he pressed the button and they just say, right, we've got emergency. Shut the window, all be quiet, and then he could hear what he was saying. Right, and then the idea was that you, everyone could go down there to help yeah, him. Yes, but he, but like you said, that only happened once in like thirty years. <laughs> yeah, well, the hours I worked. But then there's that thing in the eighties, which was that that someone was pressing this button, that and you were. But basically, you had your cab fitted with like detection equipment. Oh, it was like yeah. a meter that yes. could measure the strength, and you were you were they were called rat catchers, secret squirrels. <laughs> I had rat catcher in my head. Okay. And then, well, what was that about? Well, some fellas got the hump to the circuit instead of getting ripped out. They, they would just sit in, press that button, and just sing or make it make a noise they just had the hump to the circuit well this sort of shows and sort of the mentality of some people and we used a the London underground map you find it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G and we, there's about four or five of us and when we were working and if they said the noise is coming from oh a fella fit his cab up that he could hear the other drivers and they could tell which area you had a um, a screen uh, like a meter on your cab and if someone else was misusing your meter would come up yeah it would measure the signal strength yes and then they'd try and try hone and it try down hone it down did you did, did they ever catch him no because I joined when there was, there was more than one when people started to realise that they're going to get caught, so they didn't do it so much. Right. And then account work came in, so that yeah. someone could book through the circuit. Yeah. And then what, you'd get like a statement at the end of the month? Yeah. Back then? <laughs> yeah, what you do a job, say, hey, I'll go over to Euston. It was on a bit of paper at the end of the evening. You, you blew what, what was on the metre. And we had so much work. I mean, you could fill fill this room with the, the bits of paper, and of course they get lost and misplaced. What? And you, would you take these bits of paper into the office, or no? You had a, you, you had a book where you put every uh, job you did. Yeah. And then say once a fortnight they paid up. At paid up, you went to the shop. Went to say made a bell where the office was, and they give you a check. For Same. the work you had done. What were your favourite ones? They were supposed to be, well, no, it was true, I never did him. And Miss Huntley, I don't know if it's Mr Huntley or Mr Paul, but he was, uh, you know, going to this, connected to Harvey and Huntley's biscuits. Yeah. And they'd just given him a few bob just to get, get him out of the way because he was a bit... And it is the story where he goes into this hotel in Swiss Cottage and they wouldn't give him a room. So they went back back next next day and he bought the hotel and gave all the staff the set of the sack. Well, I think that's a bit, bit of a story. But he used to book, take a taxi on a Friday night to go to South End or some of Charing Cross or Fenchurch Street and you had to wait for him. And they used to change, and he would come back like Sunday night, but the, the, the driver would do 12 hours. 
and change it over to another cab would do 12 hours and another cab 12 and he used to pay he would get paid because he had an A1 account with Coombsys or he would go go out jogging at 3 o'clock no about 2 o'clock in the morning then he would go down to Fleet Street there was an open the cap that was open all, all the time Johnny's and he used to fill a vacuum flask up with mashed potato or something or something else then eat it in the back of the cab and then you take him back to the um, the hotel well that was one of Huntley or Palmer yes I heard, heard it and it was true where was Johnny's? in, in Fleet Street oh, I right. used to eat there and then my pal was off to the pub on a Friday night Oh, because they worked at the print works. Was it those mates? No, that was before. Oh, right. <laughs> Were these other cab driver mates? Then? No, no, they're just fellas I knew, knew from the pub. Oh, God. I wonder what it's at Johnny's now. It's probably a Tesco Express or something. No, I mean, it's, a, it's a McDonald's. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, was, it was just somewhere there. Yeah. And then when we used to get a doctor, retired doctor, who lived just over Battersea Bridge, and he used to go to the Feeney Arms, where Best used to go. And he used to use it 364 days, yeah, 364 days a week. And there's one day missing, and it was Christmas Day, and he didn't go then because the pub was shut. And they used to call it, you know who, going to you know where. What, on the radio? Yeah, because everybody <laughs> knew it. <laughs> and who was it? Sorry. A doctor, a retired doctor. And when he just used, he used to get, always get a cab? Yeah, over, more, over, what time would it be? About a half one. Yeah. And then you'd take him back at th three o'clock. Then he used to go down at half seven to closing time. And they used to do that every day of the week. Oh, my God. And he, where did they pick him up from? Oh, I can't think. It was, it's, it's a road off of Prince of Wales Drive. Yeah. And he used to go to, what, the same pub, did you say, as George Best? Uh, no, yeah, it's the Feeney Arms. I mean, that's gone now, I think. F-H-E-N-E. -E. I know where it is. I can't think of the name. Yeah. Where it, is. it was just over Chelsea Bridge or something, Battersea Bridge. Yeah. And as I say, I did it so long that they, they, they said, you know who going, you know where. <laughs> and everybody knew him. <laughs> oh, and they used to have a night, night dispatcher called Johnny, oh, I can't think of his name. Um, he used to live in another posh area, off a of cross street. Yeah. And they used to take him to Maidervale. And yeah. he had a very gruff voice. And he was a little fella with a bit dodgy leg. And they used to go pick him up. Yeah. What's he got? He's got a bowler hat. He's got an umbrella stuck on his right arm. And the other, underneath the arm, he's got the Jewish Chronicle. America's <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah. I remember... Um, I remember you telling me that the um, the good mixer was called the good mixer because for a reason. Yeah, it was a cement. One of those things made, made cement where you turn the wheel and it come out. And I think they did some renovation in the pub and they couldn't get this thing out, so they just left it in there. In the basement? Yes. <laughs> and then they called the pub the Good Mixer? Yeah. <laughs> what year, when was that? Can you remember? Uh, 19, this was 1966. Oh, right, because it's quite a famous pub now. Yeah. It's still there. Oh, Johnny Onions. He, they, they Johnny used, Onions? Yeah, that wasn't his, his second name. It was because he said where the cinema was. Not, there used to be a cinema in Chalk Farm Road. As you come over from Camden High Street, it might be Camden High Street, there used to be, a, be a, a cinema on the left. And they, the, the local fellas just used to 
Stallholders gave him a couple of sacks of onions to sell. So Johnny Onions would just sell onions. <laughs> he lived in uh, oh, what was Arlington House, and he was quite happy there. Often he used to drink with him, a few fellas from there. Yeah, and they were petrified that all these do-gooders from Camden Council wanted to give them flats, and they said, well, "We can't." You know, we're happy as we are. We don't have to worry about gas bills, electric bills, or anything like that. I wish they'd leave us alone. Because Arlington House was the house for down and outs, wasn't it? Yeah. Or they probably didn't call it that. No. But they had sort of their posh bits where one, they had their own locker, their own, their own bed. <laughs> right. And they were quite happy with that. No, they were quite happy yeah. with it. That's funny. And then, can you remember what your when when you passed your test, your your taxi license test? Can you remember what your first job was? Yes, because um, the first job you don't charge them because it's supposed to be unlucky. Oh, well, it's just okay. Well, that's just like a tradition. Yes, it was. I was on the Camden Town rank, and I went to Elthorne Road. Elthorne Road. Yeah, where Mum worked. Coincidence. Yeah, <laughs> she worked actually in that street. Yes. That's weird. Oh. oh, just trying to think. We used to call ranks by the pub. There's often a, another good way of calling work without sorting out. We used to call them to the nearest cab rank. So if you was on the cab rank, you automatically got the job. Because uh, it saved a lot of messing about and a lot of time. What if, sorry, what if someone hails you at the rank or... or, or no, they used to Hampstead. call the rank, and I can't think. Well, like the George rank up in Hampstead, um, by the Royal Free. What well, they'd have like a telephone there? No, the the fellows you used to rank up there. Yeah. And they say call the George rank going to King's Cross, and then you just blow in and say yeah, I'm first, second, or third. And if you was like the radio taxi on there, you've got the job. Were there many ranks around London no. back then? Yeah. It was just made the job easier as so we got more busier and busier. Oh, it's just driving me nuts. The Camden Town, you didn't call it a Camden Well, There used to be a, a pub on the left-hand side. And it, well, it's a fun shop now, but it changes every couple of months. Yeah. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. And what's what's this? Sorry, this is the rank in Camden Town? In the high street, you know, where the toilets are. Oh, in yeah, the, yeah. In the middle of the road there. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. What, well, actually in Camden High Street? That's it. Are they still there? Yeah, it's... It's got, still got rank there? Yeah, it's got busier again. It, not many people ranked up there, but now we're not so busy. It's always... About three or four taxis on there. So, so if someone phoned in wanting to be picked up from Camden High Street, they'd just go, they'd just radio the rank? No, no, no what, what happens? Would say they, you wanted a cab, well, St Paul's Crescent, they used to call, like, if there's a taxi on, on Camden Town rank, I mean, uh, give, it, give it to them and away, away you again. It was just a lot easier. Right, because they knew there'd, there'd be a cab there. Well, waiting. yes. Or it'd be more likely. Yes. And often I used to green used to use the green shelters. We had to sort of climb over it to get in. Well, because of the benches, yeah. you had to literally like no. climb over the table no. to. <laughs> Did you use them much? No, because I lived too near home. Well, a lot of drivers who, who lived out, say, in Romford and Chingford, I mean, they couldn't go home for lunch yeah. or go home for a cup of tea. They were yeah, using yeah. these. I remember used to um, <laughs> get a baby monitor so you could go and have a cup of tea and you'd still be able to hear when the, when the, when the yeah. dispatch... Yeah, I'm not supposed to have done that. <laughs> it was just another bit of radio, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Doesn't that count? He's doing other people out of work. Oh, well. Just, I'm sure others had found ways yeah, around it. Yeah. 
you didn't stay in for long. It was just like toilet breaks and <laughs> statute of limitations on that. Mm. I'm sure. So you, you you passed your test. Yes. You got your green badge. Yes. You've done your first job. Well, how did the how did the fair react to getting it for free? I think you just ran away before James was mind. I remember um, Jack's like your 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 mate Jack. He had um, he was in traffic, and the 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 fair was moaning about the fact that he was stuck in traffic, and yeah. he just turned around and said, "Get out!" And I mean, you can't do that, or can you? But he, you, you could. It's your your cab, your rules, I suppose, yeah. isn't it? Yes, it's. You see, the trouble is you don't know why you're picking the person up. up. It could just be, or her, just being diagnosed with cancer and just wants to get out, or vice versa, just being cleared of cancer yeah. in a happy mood. You, you just don't know why people are yeah. using you, and so you wait for them to, well, talk yeah. to you. Did you ever have any weirdos? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I remember one story... Um, or you're driving along and you, you, there's something on the back of your head and you, and it was the, there was a, a bloke in the back who was just stroking the back of your head. Do you remember that? Story? Yeah, I was a good looking fella in that. <laughs> yeah. I was a pretty boy. <laughs> Did you get a tip? <laughs> I just, just want to get in and out and the way we go. Um... There's so much I want to ask you and it's probably... <laughs> No, I should have. They all say once you get your badges, you get an exercise book and write all these things down, but you never do. I wish yeah. I had done though. Yeah. After all these years. Well, if you remember any, that would be mm. good. And, um, and and the the radio circuit would have a an annual, I don't know what you'd call it, an AGM oh, or AGM. a Beano. That's or... it, AGM. Oh, no, just how you could approve it and you vote for want to be on the the board of management. Yeah. And you know who's going to get one fellow who's going to get up and say the staff are using too much toilet paper, you know, because you're giving a, uh, what they call it? Yeah, the accounts. Accounts, what's going on. Well, we had to attend these meetings. If you didn't, you got fined £50. Oh, right, so it was mandatory. <coughs> the... Oh, always, we would say some fellas just used to get up and his wife doesn't let him speak at home, so he comes up and he's rambling on. <laughs> no, because you went up uh, up on the stand, there was a microphone, and you said whatever you wanted to say. Right, because everyone had because everyone had shares in it. You, you know, you're all part of. I've forgotten what it's called. Is it um, like a co-op? Yes. So. Yeah, because for tax reasons, for something who was done that. Oh, I can't remember the names. <laughs> and it did things right. So you, you um, got your badge in what sixty six? No, I got it first of July nineteen sixty eight. Oh, forgive me. First of July nineteen sixty eight. That's when you yeah. did your first job. First job. From Cabin High Street to Elthorn Road. Road, and then um, did it. Did it change over the 70s? Or did it get easier or harder? We did because we had a three day week in the 70s. And what, what is that? Because um, that's when the miners went on strike. I don't know, Teddy said, well, you, you needed the coal to do, you know, do all the lights and the electricity. And then they found. Um, keep it going well it didn't have enough coal so we made every work well you have a three day week I think it was Monday to Wednesday oh there's other work going on but most of you know the offices had to shut down and that um, so it was it was really quiet for yeah, the rest of the week right. very very quiet and I think the other worst time was in the 90s when um, do the, uh, the the base rate was fifteen percent, 
like your mortgages and if you wanted to buy a, a cab or something like that it was these ridiculous high amounts of boring so people never bought cabs didn't do a lot of things yeah that was hard but they can uh, it, it's so different then most of the fellas lived in ca in council homes and, and their wives had good jobs so it weren't, well, especially me my wife had a good job I don't know what I would have done yeah would or change your job yeah but you could um, keep your own hours oh, yeah, or work long hours yeah that, that seemed to appeal to you about the job that you could just get in the cab whenever yeah but you still got to do your hours you still got to take your money and that's a bit of a bit of a myth when you say you, it seems as if you work when you like and you can have some time up well you go and see the kids take put the kids from school but then you still have to go for from six a work, work in the evening to take your money up yeah it's very hard to understand that yeah because you don't know how much work you're going to do when you go out that's that's right or if someone would say look can you pick me up at 11 o'clock in the morning to take me to wherever but you had to stop an hour before because you never know where, you, where you're going to end up I mean if it's 10 o'clock you're pulling King's Rings this person says Richmond it's like sod's law you're not going to get back in time to pick pick the person up right so you had to turn work down to, yeah, we'll to get stop the good job yeah. Well, not a good job, but it, a lot of it was just going round to the local stations, and you had to stop an hour off, good hour off b before. Yeah. Which I found, you know, it's very difficult to explain to people. Yeah, yeah, because you've got a guaranteed job, but that means yeah. you've got to make sure that you're free yeah. Yeah. for the guaranteed job, so you're not ahead. <laughs> mm. Airport jobs were they were they always good? Yes, but everybody wanted them. Everybody was off them. And then when you go to the airport, it was really regimented, wasn't it? That when you got to Heathrow, oh. you, you then had to go into a very strict queue yeah. for the I rank mean, there. Usually average two hours, and I couldn't, couldn't be bothered to wait two hours. I used to come straight back. Yeah. can't think of stories to tell. Yeah, no, that's all right. No, it's just, it's just it, do you know what? It's just the, just the basics of it of how how it works yeah. isn't um i wouldn't be able to tell anyone how you know how that worked even just on a on a basic how do you get a taxi level or you know quite how you know regimented it was to you know your license from the carriage office you know really strict wasn't yeah it? very very strict you didn't mind because you, you knew the rules. If you had to appear in court for a witness, you had to wear a badge. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the law. You've got to... The law, yeah. Yeah, because it was looked after by the um, Metropolitan Police. Yeah. Huh? I wish it was... Well, I wish it was put back by the policeman. Because now it's Transport for London. Isn't yeah, it? those civil servants run it. Right. It was difficult when you were off off the road, wasn't it? If you had any, um, like a... a Accident? Sort of, yeah, or damage to the cab. Yeah. That, that would be quite hard, wouldn't it? Well, then what their argument was that you could go and hire another taxi from um, a garage. But they were so... Oh, no, I can't say uh, poo carts that you, you didn't you rather have the time off. Yeah. I mean, you didn't get paid for holidays or anything like that, bank holidays. But we all survived somehow. Yeah, yeah. And would you pay like a like an annual fee to the radio circuit? Or is it like a... Monthly. Month? And that was the, the same whether you did lots of work or... Yeah hardly went out yeah that's right so that's quite a big overhead then or it was an overhead yeah but I, I used to enjoy the radio I think if 
fun than the radar and what I've checked the job in a long, long time ago. It just made it more interested. Yeah. And you get to know the customers, the customers get to know you. And it just, yeah, it was just pleasant. We used to love doing those jobs. Yeah. But there was also one of those sort of these kids who were supposed to be a bit loopy. Um, was pick it, picking up from one score and the fella in the back is about 13, 14 and he gets out and he's chatting to me. He's leaned over and taken my watch. Just, my watch is gone. <laughs> he's got it. He just took it How, yeah. without you noticing? Hardly. It was so fast. I mean, it was an Argus one which I always keep because of bashing it. I mean, he's giving it back. I thought, well, this is, if you can do that quick and you've got a £10,000 Rolex on there, yeah, it would have been gone. Yeah, yeah. That's why I've never, never would have an expensive watch. Yeah, yeah. And this kid's supposed to be loopy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you used to have a money bag. Yes. Well, that's what ev- all, oh, all everyone the, Yeah. Uh, I used to have it t- tucked down because the seats and his part partition. But I've had a couple of uh, Waterloo, a couple of drug addicts uh, who have got a light, mate, and they're leaning in there and they're looking, <laughs> looking for it. <laughs> Makes you a bit more streetwise. Yeah. Yeah. Were you ever um, diddled? You know, did you have people who'd, who'd run at the end of the, the fair or...? Yeah, I've had it. Well, this is, mainly it's the hours of work. Because working days and personal, very, very... Well, a couple of times someone wait for me and I just drive off, I wipe my face. A couple of times like that. But you, you prefer doing early mornings and days because, yeah. rather than nights? Yes. Because of that, yeah. And being on the radio, you're guaranteed, you're guaranteed your money. And now the radio's gone. Or... Dialogues. It's gone. Yes. No one's. No, I've not seen any mention of it. No coverage of it anywhere. The the the, the radio circuit mm. owned a building. That they got what in the eighties, early eighties, probably, just off City Road. No, we got that in about nineteen ninety eight. I think it was. Yeah. And the value of it went so high. No, that that this one was. Oh. I don't know who it is. <laughs> but we sold it, then bought, because we needed bigger premises, bought this one in City Road. And then, of course, that was before um, Old Street Roundabout, what they call it, Silicon Roundabouts, before, and then it was just luck being in the right place. Yeah. And, of course, everyone sort of moved in there. Yeah. It's a bit like the housing in central London, if you lucky to buy one years and years ago and it was just yeah. lucky that it's all gone up. So the Radio Circuit Cooperative all jointly owned this property that was just yeah. getting insane amounts of money being offered to it. <laughs> yeah. That it was better to disband and split the profit. Yeah. And then fold Dialer Cab um, into... Just what, what, wind it up. Yeah. Or they wind up and join these other two circuits. Oh, well, thanks. Well, I hope thanks. it's... Yeah, no, um, it's just, it's not. it was just the basics of how how you get a badge and how, mm. you know, what it was like back then. Did you ever forget to turn your orange light on? You know, see if you're driving around. Lots of times. <laughs> Thinking it's no work. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't the only one to do it. <laughs> Did you ever have anyone fight over who got you first? I've had it once in Bond Street and I picked a woman up, another woman come running over to me and said, I saw you first. Well, I can't, I don't really know. And, and you always said your rule is whoever gets in first is the yeah, one no, who that, gets that, it. That, I mean, like musical chairs. Uh, I should, as I say, I should have had this this book, writing book, and write all these oh, things right. down. No, this is brilliant. This is this is this is absolutely 
That's brilliant. Thank you. Because now when I get asked these really basic questions <laughs> about the history of being a cabbie, um, now I know. That's funny about the King's Cross place. I didn't realise that they'd that, split up. More or less, that's why I like that. It's not until I've actually stopped and noticed how much King's Cross has played in my life. Yeah. I mean, e even St Pancras underneath there. I used to have all my taxi work done by Brian. Oh, yeah, what, in the arches? Yeah, underneath the arches there. Before they knocked them down for the yeah. Eurostar? Yeah. It's, it was in um, Prime Suspect, wasn't it? That yeah. the, the It all ended in, in the arches. Yeah. That was the arches where you used to get your cab fixed. Yeah, in Prime Suspect, they were the ones by the church. Oh, so right, so it's further went down. Right the way down. But I used to have my electrical work done there. This actually went in underneath um, St Pancras, where one brewery used to put all their barrels in there, so they said. Yeah, but that's and, where you used to get your cab fixed. Yeah, and there used to be a cafe there. A lot of the fellas used. I, I didn't use it because I only li lived up the road. Was it on the... Midland Roadside or the no, is it Bedford uh, Road? I can't remember. You used to went in by. Well, you know you got Kings Cross there, and I mean, you just went across the road into 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 the arches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the battery's gone. That's it. Yeah, of course I went to school in Kings Cross when we first moved down to London. Actually, you used to give the fella a couple of, I don't know, a couple of shillings or something. Because if your battery blew up or didn't work, you're off of work for, an hour, uh, for, for a day while you got it changed. Well, so you used to top up your battery? Battery, yeah, and water. And oil. Oh, that's right. The, the, the three things they used to check for you. So you used to, uh, you were just saying, you, you fill up with diesel about once every two days. Yeah, when you finish, when I finish work. Yeah. And you'd always get that done in King's Cross. Yeah. In York Way. Yeah. Quite a lot of fellas, we all did that because we lived there. And um, when they're filling up, they'd, they'd check your oil and, and battery. Yeah. And didn't overspill the diesel so it all went down the side of the cab it saved me doing that <laughs> I never knew why it was called well I know now but it was always called Derv in there yeah which is is that because it's diesel engine something yeah. vehicle no it's just Derv it's diesel it's just a sort of nickname for it yeah and you get another the fellas are nice it was just A lot quiet and simple times. People didn't have two hundred thousand pound mortgages and a cab and a brand new cab that he's paying fortunes for. Yeah. You can relax a bit. That's why some of the fellas used to get up so tight, they owed so much money. What, in the, later on, or? What oh, later the, on, yeah. Like in the 80s? No, no, later, I'll say more in the 90s. Can you please help my daddy get 1,000 subscribers? Just click on his face. Thanks. Bye.